Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at three different Nintendo 64s that I picked up off of eBay. The description stated they were broken and being sold as is. Only one came with a power supply, AV cables, and jumper pack. The other two were bare bones console. So let's head over to the workbench and see what we're dealing with today. Here they are. A little dirty, but not the worst that I've seen. Let's get them hooked up and see what kind of issues we're facing. The first one here is the most complete. However, you can see the reset button is stuck. I doubt that will affect our initial testing here, but something that I will fix later on. With everything plugged in, we see we're not getting the power light turning on. It's possible the reset button is causing this, but again, I doubt it. I will try resetting the power supply. Maybe the connections are just a little dirty. Well, that didn't do it. So I'll grab a spare one that I have on hand. Now the cord on this one's a little chewed up. However, I do know that it works. So we'll try this to see if the power supply was the issue. Red power light turns on, that's a good sign. And here we have video. I'll test it further later on to make sure that everything else works as it should. Until then, I'll take the jumper pack out, use it for testing on the other consoles. The second one here has a power light, but it doesn't look like we're getting any video. Now there's a number of things that could cause this. I'll, I'll reseed everything a couple of times just in case one of the connections somewhere isn't working quite right. I'll set this one off to the side and come back to it later while we test this last one here. The third and the last one seems to work just fine. Let's double check this one that had no video just to see if it was a fluke. Alright, safe to say we need to tear this one down. Let's get it opened up and see what we find. I'm going to be using the 4.5mm Nintendo Security Bit Screwdriver to open up these six screws on the bottom of the console. Now that it's opened up, I'll set the top off to the side, and this will be torn down later for a deeper clean. Well, let's get a few trays to keep our screws from being lost and mixed up. I'll carefully turn the bottom over to collect those screws. Now I don't need to remove this other leg, but I want to see what's making it stick. Oh my. I, I don't even know what this is. However, it does smell petroleum based. I'm just going to wipe this up so it doesn't smear all over my table here. Now let's remove the 14 screws holding the motherboard down. Now at first, I only point out 12, uh, but I'll soon notice my mistake and point out the last two that need to be removed. Now, while doing this, it is good to take note the differences of the screws. <laughs> Here's the last two that I forgot about. I'm going to remove the bottom heat shield. These normally come right off. But whatever was spilt on this seems to be some pretty sticky stuff. Now a quick look at the bottom of the board shows that it's in pretty good condition. Now 
Uh, but this part looks pretty gnarly. Again, with that same petroleum smelling stuff. Uh, this will be set off to the side with the rest to be deep cleaned at a later date. I'll also set these two trays of screws off to the side so nothing happens to them. To get full access to the board, we'll now just remove the remaining screws. Uh, there's really nothing hidden here, so I'm just going to get right to it. All of the screws on the top of this heatsink are on there really good. They don't normally put up this much of a fight. I tried a few different size screwdrivers uh, just to see which one fit better so that I wouldn't strip them out. Uh, however, I did go back to the original screwdriver as it was the best fit that I had on hand. Now this last one is in there really good. Now this is one of my last resorts. I'm going to use a heat gun on the lowest setting to help get that screw out. This whole top is a big heat sink, so I'm going to keep the heat gun moving to try and warm it up evenly. <laughs> Finally! After removing the heat sink plates, I'm going to take a look over the board to see if there's any corrosion or anything else that just doesn't look right. Uh, at first glance, it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, there's a little bit of dust and stuff but nothing that's popping out as an issue. The solder joints on the AV connector look okay. The cart connector looks fine too. And the memory expansion slot looks great. Right here is where I start to notice a potential issue. Some of the pins on the RC chip look a little corroded. Now this chip is in charge of both audio and video, so it is very likely that this is the culprit. I'm going to remove the last two heat sinks to get a better look and this will also make working on the board much easier. Before going forward, I'm going to clean up the board with some electrical contact cleaner and toothbrush. There is still some corrosion left on that RCP chip. My first step will be to just try and reflow the solder with some flux and a heat gun. Good old Radio Shack. Man, I miss that place. Now I'm just going to use a tiny bit of flux on those problem contacts.
Again, the heat gun is going to be on the lowest setting. Keeping the heat gun moving so I don't overheat anything while also trying to keep the board level so the solder doesn't run <laughs> where it shouldn't. After about a minute or so, I'll let the board cool down, clean it again with some more contact cleaner. I'm not going to bother putting it all back together for the test. I'm going to be careful and not leave it on for too long as there are no heat sinks on it. If this doesn't work, I will break out the soldering iron and really get at those pins. Now for the moment of truth. <laughs> we have video! Alright! So in today's video, we saw how I was able to take a N64 with no video, identify the issue, and fix it with very little soldering knowledge or skill involved. I believe this is something anyone who has the right tools and time can accomplish. On an ending note, I've noticed that most people who watch my videos are not subscribed. If you liked the video, and if you would like to see more content like this, please do subscribe, comment, and like as it will help out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.